what came after college for you guys? A lot. Um, so, you know, for me, like, I actually you majored in... Writing? Uh, you, you have a degree in creative writing? Uh, yeah, I do have a degree in creative writing. So for me, I actually went to... I started off as a computer science major. Um, and I started working as a software engineer pretty much at the same time I started in the program. So I realized that I'm not really learning anything new, so I switched my major to creative writing, which is, you know, something I was really interested in doing. Um, but I guess at the time I didn't think it could actually become anything. Um, so, you know, it was great though because I got to write a lot and um, it was just, you know, it really forced me to keep doing it through like having a full-time job doing something else. Um, so once we, once I was done with school, I think that's pretty much when we started Break a Leg, actually. I think I finished my degree in 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. Um, so, you know, it wasn't like, okay, I'm done with my program, I can start writing now. It just sort of happened that way. But I think, um, you know, Break a Leg was the first thing that was sort of like meant for an audience that I've done. Um, and it was actually the first really uh, script writing project, because I, I mean, I'd always written fiction, it, it, you know script writing was very new to me at the time and uh, if you saw some of my earlier script drafts uh, you could probably tell that that was the case <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah it's you know it's very different obviously and um, Yuri had to yell at me a lot uh, in my <laughs> initial dialogue you know that would be like paragraphs long for you know each character <laughs> so it was a learning experience as you went through it for and sure who who came up with the idea? Let's talk about Breaker Like who came up with the idea? Um, I think the kernel of the idea, I it just popped into my head. I just wanted to do a dark comedy about like a like a sitcom that was really dark where people would die, and it was more of an adventure sitcom. And it was just something that popped into my head that I I didn't think we would just we would do at any point. It was just something like oh maybe one day that'd be fun. And then when there was a a contest to make a web series. It was the thing that I had, so we, you know, it was just, again, it was that kernel of the idea, and then Vlad and I sat down and kind of hammered out the, the story and stuff. Uh, now, you said it was a contest for a web series that you entered. Brickleleg was a little different, even of web, particularly with web shows at the time, and the length of some of your episodes uh, were not necessarily the three, four-minute format that were uh, yeah. of shows at that time. Yeah, we approached it as, you know, we took it to mean uh, a TV series. So we, uh, you know, of course, the, the pilot itself that we wrote for the contest, they had a limit of five minutes. So we wrote something that was five minutes. It wasn't really something that we saw it as, I guess. So um, after we didn't win the contest, then we, we really just wrote what, you know, we felt like it should be, which is a 30-minute show. Now, how do, you, how, do you, how do the two of you write together? Uh, does one of you come up with a story arc, the other write the characters, who's, you know, what's your what's method? method? We usually, will sit down and, and break a season out into like a three-act structure. And then once we have that and vaguely know what all the characters are doing, we'll usually break it down by episode together. Um, we'll throw note cards on a wall and things like that. And uh, and then once we have all the basic information... It looks like this. Episode, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's for... <laughs> a series that we recently are we're working on. Yeah. So uh, and then we just split up the episodes evenly. Uh, we usually kind of we we always start out doing like um, kind of just switching off. I'll do one, you do two. But it always ends up. It seems to happen that I tend to write the beginning and the ends, and Vlad used, writes the middle. We just seem to be better at that for some reason. But all right, all right. you know, we keep wanting to switch, but it hasn't happened yet. Did you work the same <laughs> way on Leap Year that you did on uh, Break the Leg with that? In that way, I think we worked better on Leap Year because we. Yeah, I think yeah. a break a leg. It was just like I'll write the next episode and we'll see what happens, and then you go from there. And then I, so it was more just kind of free, a free for all. Uh, in Leap Year, we've, as we've evolved as writers, you know, we've gotten better at organizing ourselves and getting better with structure and plot, and and that includes planning more. So no, no break a leg. You did on very little budget. You're a very small budget. Small budget. Yeah, and, and no budget really. I mean we. We, the two other owners of the company, Justin and Dashiell, uh, worked at a university, um, and they they were in their tech department. And at one point, the university was buying like a camera and gear to like film professors, and they just wanted a dinky camera, but they had a ton of money, and they were like, "What do you guys suggest we buy?" 
and they were like, you should buy this, which is it was called an HVX, and it's like a higher end prosumer film camera. Um, at the time, higher end digital camera. So they bought it, and then their boss was amazing and let us use it. And so we borrowed that, we borrowed the lights, we shot a lot of things at the university, um, and you know, we just like. I think I think one of uh, Dashiell's mo Dashiell's mom gave us money for food for a while. We had like five hundred dollars for craft services, and uh, <laughs> we just put our own money into it. I mean, we we never had any until very much later, near almost the end of it, did we have any money coming in. But in the beginning, we just we had full time jobs and would just shoot late yeah. at night. And, I went back to some of your old blogs because there was one from several years ago where uh, actually you made an appeal to Josh Sweden uh, after Dr. Horrible and his, his uh, shoestring $100,000 budget. And there was a quote that I thought would have been attributed to you, and I'll give it to you anyway, even though I couldn't find it in your blog, that $100,000 is in a shoestring budget, tying the mic to the boom with the shoestring is a shoestring budget. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, it, was, it got a little bit frustrating because there were so many articles at that time, especially coming out like, oh my god, look, the web has shows on it after Joss Whedon did something. And, you know, to give him credit, it was great, and it, it did bring light. Like, it, it brought the web show kind of to this into the spotlight a little more. But at the time, it was frustrating because we were working constantly and no money. And they're like, look at what he managed to accomplish with no money at all. He only called in favors to shoot on giant sets and sound stages and had all these stars in it, you know. So it was a little bit like, okay, I mean, it's still a professional thing. It's not, you know, he's not an indie filmmaker. So, you know, it's funny because that was a few years ago, and now I find myself making the argument that $100,000 is a shoestring budget. <laughs> like, I find myself <laughs> meeting saying, you know, yeah, we can't nice produce. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so, but it's like, at the time... $100,000 was for the web was amazing. And now there's more money in it, but also the quality's gone way higher and the ex expectations are way higher. So when someone hires us and says, can you make us a full TV looking show for $100,000? It's like, well, no, it's not a magic format where we can make the exact same thing TV makes just for less money. That doesn't make any sense. You know, before we were struggling in the filmmakers, that's why we could do it. We can't keep calling in favors forever. So yeah.